Today is one of those days. It's a good day. <laughs> it's a, a, it, I used to say, you know, it feels like Monday all day long, but uh, we are glad that you are here today. We're going to be talking about something very special in the life of the church, and, and that is the way that we experience great joy in our lives is through serving. Uh, yesterday our, was our church work day, and we had our youth were doing a, a lock-in over in the uh, Family Life Center, and there were uh, many adults that showed up, and the youth jumped right in. They were raking, and they were cleaning up, and they were washing windows. Uh, and it was uh, one of those opportunities, I think, for uh, preachers, at least, to do something with our hands. There's, there's so much that we do that I think is intangible. Uh, you really never know uh, whether what you do is going to amount to a hill of beans. And so uh, to be putting some sweat equity into the life of the church, I think, was so important. Um, today, I want to uh, call your attention to Luke's gospel. I'll be reading from the 10th chapter, uh, selected verses. Will you bow your heads as we pray for illumination? Oh God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be sent to us to open up these words of Scripture that they may be the very living Word of God for us. For this we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke writes, After this the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submitted to us. And Jesus said to them, Do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And then turning to the disciples, Jesus said to them privately, Blessed are the eyes to see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning, like I said, we're going to be talking about what it means to serve as God's people, what it means uh, to give of ourselves to others. Uh, this is one of the things that I think is central to the message of Jesus that whoever wants to save their life will end up losing it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the gospel, they will save it. And he said other things like, if you want to be greatest, you must become the servant of all. And all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but the humble will be exalted. You see, Jesus knew there was something at stake in our lives, something that was central in what he taught and what he did and what he poured out into others, and that was that we experience God most actively in our lives through the acts of service that we show to others. Jesus said, The Son of Man did not come 
to be served, but rather to serve. And then he backed it up with his life, what he gave to the disciples. And I think that this isn't really uh, a very easy concept uh, for us to grasp because all this talk of the necessity of us losing in order to gain, of us giving away in order that we might receive, it, it's not really the path that we would choose. Because who wants to be a loser? We all want to be winners. We, we want to excel at something. We want to be lifted up. And so to intentionally talk about losing, well, it just doesn't feel right to us. And because of that, because of the difficulty of these sayings, I think that Jesus, in talking to the 72 says that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Have you experienced that in your own life, in the life of this church? It seems that there are a lot of people that serve, and yet it seems to be like it's the same persons that continue to serve in many different places over and over again, you see, Jesus knew that he was going to send the disciples into the towns ahead of him. The very towns that he himself was going to visit later on. And he, he had poured in their lives all of his teachings. He had, they had seen the miracles that he had performed. They watched as he cast out demons, and he said, I want you to go into the towns ahead of me, and I want you to give what you have received to do the things that I had done, and that sounded totally impossible, incredible, and it probably scared the daylights out of all of them. Because you see, the 72 came from the crowds that had been following Jesus. There were, in the New Testament, there were the crowds, those who were, uh, they could take Jesus or leave him. Uh, they had some interest in him, but among the crowds, there were also those for whom the words that Jesus spoke and the things that he did Somehow they touched their lives. And they began to dare to hope in this one who spoke words of life and hope into them. And so out of the crowd, he calls the 72. There was nothing extraordinary about any of them. If there was, we would have been told their names. But instead, they were, they were ordinary people like ourselves. They were just trying to live their lives. They were trying to eke out a living. Some were carpenters. Some were farmers. Some just were barely getting by. And Jesus turns to them to do the work that he has done. And you see, if Jesus had been a perfectionist like me, he was perfect, but he wasn't a perfectionist. He would have probably done it all himself. Because after all, who could do it better than Jesus? Have you ever told yourself that before? It's easier do, to do myself than to show somebody else how to do it. I experienced that yesterday in the work day. I had uh, some youth at my house, and, you know, they were raking, and some of them were, like, raking like this. 
you know, and I, I was wanting them to get the leaves out of the yard so that the grass could have a chance to grow. And then we went to something a little bit more fun. We went to wash the windows on the front, front porch of the patio, and I was stepping back, and I was, you know, letting them uh, rinse off the windows, and then we all kind of scrubbed the windows to get the dirt and the pollen off of them. And, you know, you've got that Windex stuff you can spray on the outside of the windows. And, and I found myself, um, when they were spraying the windows, saying, you're not doing it right. That's the inner dialogue I was having. You're not doing it right. And uh, some of them were in service today. And, and so I had to fight that tendency to want to take away an opportunity for them to serve God by giving what they had. And I think it was the Holy Spirit that was telling me, Dick, you need to step back. How are they going to learn? Except they have the opportunity to serve. That's what Jesus did with the 72. And he said to them, Blessed are the eyes that have seen what you have seen, and the ears that have heard what you have heard. For many prophets and kings long to see what you have seen, and what you have heard. They had waited generation after generation for the coming of the Messiah, and now the Messiah stood in front of the 72, and he was pouring out himself into them. Jesus said, Whoever wishes to be great among you must become my servants. Whoever wants to gain their life must lose it because in, if you want to save your life, you will lose it. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be. And what Jesus gives is a, I think, a central message a central way of living, and that is if you really want experience what Jesus is all about, if you really want to find great joy in your life like the disciples did when they returned from these cities and these towns, then you have to do it through service. That's what he wanted us to know. And that's what he gave to this 72 different followers to take to others. You see, Jesus, he took all of himself and he poured it into these disciples and he said to them go out and do the things that I do go what you have seen and heard do the very things that I have done for you for in John's gospel we read that Jesus tells them not only will these things that I have done will you do but you will do even greater things than these. And so they went out into the towns, and they came back rejoicing, saying, Lord, even the demons have submitted to us. But Jesus said, don't, don't find joy in that the demons submitted to you, but rather your joy will come through whom you have served, through what you have given. I have given to you 
and now you must give to others. And so the 72 who followed Jesus after his death and resurrection began to pour what Jesus had given to them into the lives of others, into the lives of those who would become the New Testament church. The 3,000 who on the day of Pentecost responded to the call of God to the preaching and the teaching, they followed the disciples into service. Everything that they received from the 72, they now held within themselves. And this was the pattern that Jesus poured into the 72. The 72 poured into those who were following Jesus but hadn't yet committed. They poured into them, and then they in turn were to pour into others. And from generation to generation, that's the way it happened. The church went into all of Jerusalem and Judea and as far as Samaria. They poured it into the Apostle Paul, who became the one who proclaimed the gospel to those who were Gentiles, to non-Jews. He poured it into Timothy. He poured it into Barnabas and to Lydia and Aquila. Christ, through these 72, and from the New Testament church, passed it on from generation to generation, from century to century, on down to John Wesley, who then poured it out to the one who would eventually pour it out for us. Can you think of that person who poured out what they had received from others into you? Can you think of that person who served you and raised you up in faith and who set the example that abundant joy comes to those who give what they have received to others? For me, I... I, I have several people I can think of. I think of my across-the-street neighbor, Espy Watts. Espy had two sons. They were best friends of mine. And Espy served as a coach, a little league coach. And he took young boys, and he taught them the rules of the game and the strategy, and he, uh, he just supported them in such a mighty way. And then there was me. You know, I remember that day, uh, used to, you would get a baseball cap, and it didn't have the little plastic thing in the back. You, it was just a cap, and it fits your head. And then usually what would happen in the summertime, uh, I would go get a burr haircut, and that hat would just fall down over my eyes. And this was sort of symbolic of who I was. I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't very sure of myself, but Espy invested what had been given to him by his parents, by his teachers, by the people in his church, and he invested it in me. And then, after he gave it to me, he called me to serve others. This morning, I, I want to share a video. Uh, we are honoring those persons who have been serving in of our lives, and, and, and they're going to give you the reasons of why they serve. And so, let's take just a few moments 
to watch these four people who shared their story. Because it gives me a way to give back to the kids. Um, I was raised in a church, and if there weren't people that helped me along the way, I don't think I'd be where I am today. So I feel as though it's good for me to do that for kids coming up now. Um, if anything, it's helped my faith grow. I've seen the kids and watched them develop, and seeing God work through the kids is also a great sign. And um, I just want to continue to do it and help them grow. And as long as I see them grow, I feel as though my faith is growing as well. who has youth here, um, I want to make sure that my children are um, getting the best advice, the best um, mentoring that they can have. Um, I went through youth here, and so I was mentored by other people and, and other adults who are here at this church. And so my hope is that through me being able to volunteer now, I will need that for the future generations of our church. For me, it has actually made me take a step back and look at my faith um, a little differently. I've learned things about um, the Methodist Church. I've learned things about prayer. I've learned things that I did not know before and or have forgotten. And so it has really helped me in my step and my faith with walk with, with God. It's, it's fun. And uh, uh, I've always been told being the son of two teachers that you know, it's important to learn how to teach what you believe and to help bring up the next generation. And Jesus says, uh, let the children come to me. Don't try, don't try to stop them. That, that, that speaks personally and powerfully to me. And that's why I'm so motivated to be in this ministry. Well, I'm a former teacher. So I spent 30 years in the classroom. And so I couldn't give it up, of course. And I have really enjoyed being with kids and being able to continue to teach. And the church setting is perfect. Um, it enables me to give back to the church and at the same time spend time uh, helping educate our kids. And I just love it. My faith is, is greatly enhanced by working with kids. Uh, the one thing that I want to do and what I need in my own life is a spiritual and emotional recharge pretty frequently. And so doing this once a week just gives me that recharge that I need to continue in my faith and my, my quest for, for answers to all, all of the things we wonder about and, and get concerned about no matter how old we are. I think my favorite memory, at least with the fourth and fifth graders I've been working with, is just the, the competitive spirit they have that's, that's in a fun way. Um, particularly, I guess, when we do our Bible drills at the end of every Sunday morning lesson. Um, they really get into it, they get excited, and they have a lot of you know, fierce competition, but it's still at a, at a fun level, so I've always enjoyed that. Um, I think my favorite memory of volunteering with the kids is when we go out on the playgrounds and some of the Sundays that I work with the Katie First kids, just to see the joy on their face and knowing that they learned something about God in the process um, is something that I very much cherish and um, I, I enjoy doing it and seeing kids have fun. So. I think a favorite memory for me for volunteering with the youth would be um, a few weeks ago when we um, I helped teach with the senior high class and we were having um, a lesson on prayer. We really felt God in our midst, in our presence, and just seeing God in their faces, and um, it just really made me have hope for our future and just have a great time with them. My favorite memory is, is throughout this process, you have these kids and they go off. The thing that is most precious to me in that memory is just being able to stay connected with them because once they leave here, it's important to kind of encourage them to, you know, take their spiritual life out into the world. Well, I don't think you should be nervous. Just engage with them and show up. And when you get there, the nerves will go away. The kids are great and the kids are going to be kids. So just be yourself as well and things will be great. God prepares you and the Holy Spirit will give you the words. Once you take that step and you visit with them and just get to know them, they open up to you and you'd be amazed at the relationships that you could form with these kids.
Jesus poured into the disciples and someone poured into us the love of God and the love of serving. And we are called to pour into the lives of our children, our youth. You know, it takes a lot to do what we do on Sunday morning. And what we're going to be doing, especially today, is focusing on our children, our youth, and on our welcoming ministries. We have a lot of things that we uh, that are done every week. It takes about 100 people every Sunday uh, to have this Sunday morning experience. When you think about it, uh, we just sort of take it for granted. And when, it, when somebody's gone, there's a hole. There's a job that maybe didn't get done unless somebody else was to step in. And so I want you to take uh, this card that's found inside your worship guide. It is uh, something that we want you to take and just uh, think about a place in which you can serve with our children or with our youth or in one of our welcoming teams. And you'll see it says children for Sunday school or Katie First Kids. That's where our children go after uh, they've had their children's moment to have their own unique worship experience. Uh, our youth, they, you can be teaching in Sunday school or volunteering at, uh, in Sunday evening uh, to be able to help them in UMYF. And on Sunday mornings, uh, you know, we are known as a, a very friendly church. But friendliness isn't, it isn't limited just to the people uh, that have a greeting or welcoming position. All of us can do it. All of us have been given some ability, some talent that the Holy Spirit uh, can use. And on the back of that card, you're going you're gonna to find a, a little bit of what it entails uh, to volunteer in one of these areas. Now, um, I want you to know, you're not signing on the dotted line. Uh, this isn't uh, for you to sign up today, and then you have to start work uh, next Sunday. But rather, this is just simply a way for you to to do something, to pass on to others by simply saying, I, I may be interested, and, and I want to I go and hear, uh, hear more about how I can serve and, and to see if that's a good fit. And if it is a good fit for you, then they're going to be, in our children and youth on May 20th, they're going to be talking to you and helping you discern where it may be that you want to sign up. So you're kind of on the hook today, but you're not mostly on the hook, if that's what it sounds like to me. You're just expressing an interest to allow God to be at work in you and so that you can begin to pour your life into the life of one of our students. And you know what happens after that? Our students will grow up to pour their lives in the life of someone else, to share the love of Jesus, the abundance of joy that comes through serving. Friends, we're going to be receiving our, our morning offering. It is the way in which we give of ourselves. We, we give our, our presence in that Connect card. We, we give our prayers. We give our money. And now we can give the opportunity to serve. And so... I want to invite you to fill that card out, and when 
the offering baskets come your way, if you'll put in your connection cards, your prayer cards, but if you'll also put in this interest card, this is the way that we will serve God. I invite our ushers to come forward as we receive our morning offering.